doesn't seem connected to Cypher or Skullface at all. But if it goes well, we may get an Afrikaans interpreter. The details are on your iDroid.
call that thing Sahalanthropus? Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa. The Southern Sahara. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sahalanthropus, Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahalanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about seven million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skull's foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right. Which would mean Sahalanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahalanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, not at all. Sahalanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahalanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass. That concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahalanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahalanthropus's name. Don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. I see someone desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact. But that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Snake, you finally came. Just don't record this, okay? I'm not recording anything. What's this about? What I'm about to say stays between you and me. It's about the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. <sighs> Do you know a researcher by the name of Clark? He works in the biotech industry. Real advanced stuff. His area is bioengineering, but lately he's also gotten into genetic research. Never heard of him. Well then, what do you know about cloning? <sighs> I think I've heard enough. Hold on, this is important. Cloning lets you create a genetic copy of an organism. You take the nucleus of one of its cells, and you swap it with the nucleus of an unfertilized egg from another member of the same species. They started out working with plants, but since then they've had success with other organisms, including mammals. It's a hot area for a lot of places right now. Corporations, universities, research groups. There's no shortage of scientists out to get famous and patent their work, with morality taking a back seat. Isn't that a little outside your field? It's got nothing to do with my research. But I thought it might be of interest to you. Cloning. And Dr. Clark, I mean. Go on. Now, this is really highly classified stuff. But I've heard that an American biotech company has successfully cloned a human being. What's more, it happened over ten years ago. And the researcher behind it was Dr. Clark. You've really never heard of him? I don't meet many doctors. This Dr. Clark is a complete ghost, even to others in his field. His age, where he comes from, that might not be his real name. And I can't even say for sure he's a he. Clark's employer, ATGC, its company motto is embracing your hopes, preserving talent. What does this have to do with me? Cypher.
Dr. Clark works for ATGC, and they have connections to DARPA. Cypher couldn't function without the communications network DARPA's built. Meaning, Cypher has to be a part of the Pentagon. Or at least, the two are joined at the hip. DARPA is a driving force behind human cloning. It's a pretty high priority project for them. And this Dr. Clark? Some say he's a pivotal player in Cypher. But that's not all. Every cell nucleus in an organism contains the genetic information for that organism. Think of it as a blueprint for life. Clark appears to be working on how to decode this information and rearrange it at will. If you could do that, it would mean being able to custom design human beings for specific purposes. Can you believe that? Suppose for a moment that this is all fact. A man of your talents, if your genetic information died with you, that would be a terrible loss for mankind. But what if mankind could preserve you for future generations by cloning you? All right, enough. I get the idea. Look, I know it's inductive reasoning, but this weapon to surpass Metal Gear they're developing in Africa, I believe it's something that uses this new technology. <sighs> Speaking as a fellow scientist, it chills me to the bone. That's rich coming from you. If genes serve as our blueprint, then I wonder if they include an impulse that drives us to tweak the design. Can you imagine that? Genes, encoded with information that wants its children to decode it. Is life itself putting the direction of our next evolution in the hands of scientists? I guess it would take some real arrogance to believe that. And yet, it could be what Cypher's after. I think you're barking up the wrong tree. But that was an interesting story. It'd make a good movie. You have to believe me. Where'd you hear all this anyway? Where? I just overheard it in bits and pieces while I was forced to do that research for them. Right. Wait a minute. Look, I, I want to help you. I want to be of service here. I'm risking my life with this. Is that so? Maybe it's time we brought someone else into the conversation. No, not him. Not Ocelot. You can't do this. Ever since the attack on your unit nine years ago, the name Big Boss has become known the world over. What do you mean? Those of your men who survived traveled far and wide. They fought throughout the world. In fact, they're part of the reason we have all these PFs now. Every one of them suffered their own phantom pain from losing you. Talking about you wherever they went helped to heal their wounds. Your actions and words, your legend, has been told on every battlefield they've set foot on. Obviously, as the tales have spread, the truth's been distorted, painted over. Big Boss sacrificed himself to show us the threat that Cypher poses. He sounded a warning, so it goes. A warning? Too much power destroys the hands that hold it. Apparently, you chose to be a living example of that. I never said any of that. The moment any truth is passed on, it starts turning into fiction. The problem is, fiction inspires people more than facts. To the world, you're now the legendary mercenary Big Boss. The lessons you've taught the PFs are the reason they're so widespread. They're the reason they've survived. And you know what they all aspire to? To one day go nuclear, just like you did, and stand up to Cypher. Of all the stupid things you could do. They'll never understand what you really wanted. Heroes are misunderstood. It takes a man of the same caliber to understand what drives them. Bottom line is, these guys want to be like their hero, Big Boss. And deep down, they all have their eyes on nuclear weapons. They say that a nuke is the only means of standing against Cypher. But these days, it's becoming little more than a slogan to rally the troops and survive in a cutthroat business. Currently, there are three major PFs who've expanded into Central Africa. CFA, Rogue Coyote, and Zero Risk Security. HEC's investigations have shown there's almost no overlap between their areas of operation. It's not so much a turf war, more like they have a gentleman's agreement. If you do cross paths with them, you probably won't have to face more than one at a time. Still, don't expect to walk in the park. The CFA, Contract Forces of Africa. These guys are a major player. 
Their head office is in Pretoria, South Africa. That's also where the South African Defense Force is headquartered. We think the two are closely connected. An HEC investigation revealed that most of the CFA's operators are former SADF soldiers. South Africa has been locked in struggles with neighboring regimes for years. That means constant action. And we know better than anyone that's the best kind of training. A company drawing its recruits from hardened military vets. You can bet they know how to handle themselves. Do not underestimate them. Within the CFA is a company of soldiers made up mainly of locally hired operators. They speak Afrikaans to communicate with personnel from the CFA. But if you notice any speaking the local language, that's them. Though hired from the local population, they were originally part of a paramilitary group, so they'll have plenty of combat experience. And unlike their days shooting junkyard rifles out of beat-up pickup trucks, the CFA now supplies them with the latest gear from the West. On top of that, they've been combat trained by the South African Army. All that adds up to a much stronger fighting force. So don't brush them off. Look at the Angola-Zaire border region. These Bank of the Muneni River in particular. It's a microcosm of a problem that stretches all across Africa. There's a civil war going on in Angola fought between the government MPLA and the Western-backed Unida. Zaire is still a dictatorship under President Mobutu, but numerous uprisings have broken out in its remote regions. With all the trouble elsewhere keeping their hands full, neither government has control over their side of the border. They depend on militias and PFs, as do the rebels. Government forces, guerrillas, militants, groups of all shapes and sizes hawk whatever resources they can to hire PFs. Conflict brings PFs. PFs expand the war zone, and more conflicts erupt in a continuous chain reaction. <laughs> Sounds like our kind of work. Mother base could grow by leaps and bounds. There's a violent power struggle going on within the contract forces of Africa, the PF that ran security for the Mathinda oil field. Most of their key people are Afrikaners, but naturally for a South African organization, some of its founders are British. Details are sketchy, but apparently the Afrikaners are holding these British personnel for interrogation near Kaziba camp. We've been asked to rescue one of them, a man known as the Viscount. We don't have the Viscount's exact location, but he doesn't speak the Afrikaners' language, Afrikaans. They'll need an interpreter who speaks English in order to interrogate him. Meaning if we tail the interpreter, He'll lead us right to the target. By the way, the contract specifies that it's all right to ignore the other British prisoners. But the final decision is yours, boss.
Several high-level British CFA officials are being held by their Afrikaner colleagues. One of these prisoners is the rescue target, a guy known as the Viscount. The target's location is unknown, but they're bound to have an interpreter present when they interrogate him. We've used info from the intel unit to predict the interpreter's location. It's on your iDroid. Follow the interpreter and extract the target when you find him. is the lingua franca for mercs in that area. If you're going to get any information from interrogations, you'll need an interpreter. But don't extract the interpreter just yet. If he doesn't turn up, they won't be able to do the interrogation. If they then decide the target's no longer any use to them, they won't hesitate to kill him. Oh. 
Several high-level British CFA officials are being held by their Afrikaner colleagues. One of these prisoners is the rescue target, a guy known as the Viscount. The target's location is unknown. They're bound to have an interpreter present when they interrogate him. We've used info from the intel unit to predict the interpreter's location. It's on your eye droid. Afrikaans is the lingua franca for mercs in that area. If you're going to get any information from interrogations, you'll need an interpreter. But don't extract the interpreter just yet. If he doesn't turn up, they won't be able to do the interrogation. If they then decide the target's no longer any use to them, they won't hesitate to kill him. not the target. Orders are only the Viscount gets rescued. Can't understand why he'd receive special treatment, but I don't imagine it'll be a problem to save the other prisoners too. Good. Good. The MPLA's oil field rights, where did you get this information? It was an anonymous source. Rain. The sound of rainfall should help to mask your footsteps. You are not fooling anybody. You made up a story with the others. You British are all liars. You know how much the Afrikaners suffered because of you in the Boer War. That wasn't me. I said it was not him. But it was you that us betrayed. But it was you that betrayed us. It wasn't me. It was the. This count. Godoch. I see next bit as a sick client. So, our rescue target was behind some kind of plot. Careful not to draw the enemy's attention. Boss, I did some digging, and it seems the target himself gave us this mission through a representative. Obviously, he couldn't contact us directly due to his predicament, but still, something about this Viscount doesn't add up.
prisoner you extracted wasn't the target, but we did get some information. Seems the prisoners aren't held together, and the cells and interrogation rooms are separate places. Now you will both talk. Where did you get the information on the MPLA's oil field rights? We don't know anything. I swear. I say I swear on the other hands. You mean you attempted to contact the MPLA based on information from an unknown source? We thought it was suspicious, sure. But we stood to make a lot of money out of it. We're businessmen. You're a joke, not businessmen. Failed mercenaries trying to skin this country. We didn't. We didn't try to hide anything. The Viscount said to keep quiet for now. That's all. Zij zei al het die bedoel om je het weg te steken, maar die burggraaf wil het stil zijn. Ha, het is dus als die burggraaf ze stil. Goed, die burggraaf kan ons die rest vertel. En een vijkant kan tel as een rest. Wait, she had nothing to do with this. Moet ik kom met wees. Die hel is groot genoeg vir julle al toe heen. Louise, kom hoor. Louise.
That's African peach. The shape of its petals gives it the nickname the pincushion. It's used in local traditional medicine as a pain reliever and tranquilizer. Boss, one of the prisoners has been killed. But we don't know if it was a target or not. Hurry up and ID the target. for the rescue target's interrogation. He's a CFA Mark II, but he serves as a language specialist. His job is English Afrikaans simultaneous interpreting. Tail him to find out where they're keeping the target. If you run into trouble, give us a call. Some advice.
Good dog. This is Pequot. Arriving shortly at LZ.
the other British prisoners filled us in about the Viscount. It turns out he's a real two-faced son of a bitch. He was planning to secure the MPLA's oil field rights for himself in exchange for swapping the CFA's alliance from the anti-government United Rebels to the state-backed MPLA. He hid this from the Afrikaners, but once he thought the jig was up, he tried to pin it on the other British personnel and take off. The Afrikaners captured him, and that was when he asked us to rescue him, and only him. I'll throw him in the brig for now, but we may have to be extra persuasive with this one. By the way, boss, we got some interesting news out of our friend the Viscount. He mentioned that more than a few PFs in the region have purchased Walker gears. The CFA is the same. That's Soviet Army technology, and it's still a prototype. Only Cypher could be leaking it to the PFs. But the question is, why? Cypher, take a look at your mission list. 